Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. This week I'm going to talk to you about cloning in Snowflake. Cloning is one of my favorite features that Snowflake offers. It allows you as the user to save huge amounts of time and effort by creating a copy of a database, a schema or a table. There's no data movement involved and no additional storage required to create a clone, meaning it's fast, simple, and it doesn't cost a cent. Furthermore, the cloned object is writable and it's completely independent of the source object. That is, changes made either to the source object or the cloned object are not part of each other. OK, guys, so let's start by talking about uh, cloning in Snowflake and what problem it solves. So as part of any software development lifecycle, it requires you to take a requirement, design a solution, develop and write the code before testing it, and then obtaining user feedback and then validating the results. All of these steps must happen before you release the code to production. And needless to say, this takes a lot of time. So how did it go back in the day? So it's important to test the performance, obviously, of any new feature before putting that change into production. Historically, it was really expensive to maintain an environment on premise, the same size as production using physical hardware. So some clients decided uh, to opt for a scaled down version at say half the size of production. So this allowed the client to execute the same workloads on both production and the scaled down environment to obtain a baseline. These comparative figures can then be used for future subsequent testing. In my experience, clients uh, in the past that had the same size hardware in production and in a test environment end to end was really a, a big luxury for most clients. If you were using a scaled down version of production, even then it wasn't 100% accurate. You'd sometimes have additional workloads executing against your production environment, users running reports and querying the data. So that made establishing a true performance baseline very difficult. You really need test data, which is a solid representation of your live environment. Uh, this becomes increasingly important to get the same shape and the same representation of it. You can substantially ease the test and effort and flush out any bugs in your code or any errors before getting to production, which is obviously ideally where you want to get to. I recall in some situations that populating non-production environments by using data generation tools um, or taking copies of production data and then masking sensitive um, data types, that was almost a project in itself and just took a, a really significantly long time. The, you know, this really helps a great deal having um, real world live um, test data when users are trying to validate figures in their reports, for example. It allows your users to run reports side by side, analyze the output on the basis that your test environments are in sync. The best case scenario you could possibly hope for was a full end to end setup where your source systems allow data to flow through into your test. Uh, environments and then you had a report dashboard front ends so you could run the reports and then compare side by side between production and your test environments. Thankfully the days of waiting hours, weeks or even months to spin up a copy of your production warehouse are over. So cloning and Snowflake allows you to easily create a copy of nearly any database and object along with its data into another environment. Before we move on to getting into the real uh, detail around cloning, just want to make you aware of some resources to help you on your Snowflake journey. I've got a Udemy course, which has currently helped over 2000 students um, get certified in the Snowpro core exam. There's a link underneath in the comments. I've also got a LinkedIn profile. I'd love it if you want to follow and connect with me, where I'll be posting updates to um, when I release new Snowflake material. And of course, if you find this channel useful, I'd really appreciate it if you like and subscribe and any comments on this one or future sessions that you've got in mind, any ideas, please drop them below. OK, back to cloning. So what kind of use cases does cloning solve? So as we discussed a little bit earlier, the testing historically was really a massive effort. So the primary benefit for cloning is to support the ease of creation of a development or test environment as part of an overall dev, dev lifecycle approach. At times you might find benefits using clones for a one-off requirement uh, that uses production data along with some additional columns derived from data in the warehouse. So basically that means you can take some production data um, that may not have additional columns that are required for a discovery or exploratory analytics use case. They, they may not exist in production at the moment. So you could quickly clone a copy of that production data, tag those additional columns on, give those to your data scientists, 
let them explore the data and understand if there's any new value or tangible insights they can derive from that data. If they can, then you can do the, the hard work to integrate that into your production uh, data pipelines and models and make it available to them on a, a regular basis. A clone here would obviously work really well and it would allow the business to fulfill their requirement quickly and avoid a lot of development effort to add new data when the value of it isn't necessarily realized. Another use case is for discovery analytics. So imagine your the following scenario. Your, your data scientists want to play with their own copy of the data. They need to manipulate some of that as part of their modeling process, such as to find new features. Quick and easy way of allowing them to do this while maintaining the integrity of production data is to create a clone with the objects they need. You could create these in a separate schema or database, for example, to further isolate those objects. And that's a, a real uh, powerful use case that you can use to empower your data consumers and, and analysts. So moving on to talking about working with clones. When you generate a clone, it creates a metadata operation, metadata only operation underneath the covers. And so what does that really mean? Well, it means you can create copies of databases, schemas or tables without needing to actually physically move any data. The cloud services layer of the architecture, and if you're interested in, in new to Snowflake, you can click the link above and get a good understanding of how the architecture fits together. But the cloud services layer of the architecture, which houses the metadata repository, that keeps a track of any cloned objects within the Snowflake account. Importantly, cloned objects, when you create them, they don't actually use any additional storage. So there's no additional incremental cost when you create them. However, they are writable, which is a, a really good and cool feature, as you can imagine, it's very useful. Once you do change that um, data, then you will start incurring storage costs for the versions of those new records that you've changed. And because there's no data movement, generating a clone is very fast. So how do you create one in Snowflake? So the following code demonstrates how simple it is to create a clone of a table. That is it, one line, create or replace table. You give the table a clone name, use the keyword clone, and then you specify the source object that you want to clone afterwards. All child objects at the time. So if you want to clone a schema or a database, the um, the syntax is the same as above, and you would do create or replace schema, create or replace a database instead. Um, so any child objects at that level are also replicated along with the associated table data as it stands at that point in time. And what objects can be cloned? So the following objects in Snowflake can be cloned. Okay, so we've got databases and schemas and tables that we've just mentioned. We've got streams. Bear in mind that any unconsumed records in the stream are not available for consumption in the clone. So the stream starts again at the time or point it was created. External name stages can be cloned. This is no impact on the contents of the external storage location. It's simply a pointer to where the storage location is held within your third party cloud provider. If you're interested in that, again, there's a link in the, in the top of the screen now that you can go and check out and that covers data movement and specifically external stages in Snowflake. File formats can be cloned, tasks can be cloned, pipes can be cloned, but what can't be cloned? Internal Snowflake stages can't be can't be cloned. Internal pipes within Snowflake, um, not cloned. And if you do clone a, a pipe, uh, an external one, that's paused by default. So you've always got to remember to switch it back on and that's trying to prevent you mistakenly cloning a pipe and, and for data to go into that clone that you don't necessarily want and create duplicate data records. So it's paused by default. In view, so interestingly, you can't clone a view directly. However, you can clone a view if it's contained within the database or schema that you're cloning originally. So in summary then, we talked about how cloning allows you to selectively create a duplicate object under a different name. Simple to use as we saw, super fast and there's no data movement involved. It's cost efficient because you don't use any of the storage, because you're not physically moving the data, and it's writable. You can use it for a number of use cases as we discussed, but it's most powerful for creating copies of environments for testing or troubleshooting, and it will save you a lot of time if you're coming from a traditional relational database world. 
just want to finish by letting you know I've got a new book coming soon, probably early next year. I hope you find the video useful. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and drop a comment on any of the topics you'd like to see me cover. And there'll be new videos coming every week.